So Breakthrough Listen has about 20% of the observing time on the Green Bank Telescope, and as a result, we're able to undertake one of the most powerful searches for signals from extraterrestrial intelligence that has uh, ever been possible. The size of the telescope, uh, it's the largest steerable radio telescope on the planet, and so we're able to point to any position in the sky to scan stars wherever they may be as visible from Green Bank. And then the availability of all of these receivers, which enables us to scan through billions of channels. We don't know before we make a detection whether ET might choose frequencies that are around a gigahertz or frequencies that are much higher. And so the instruments here really enable us to see a, a very wide range of frequencies and to reach exceptional sensitivities given the collecting area of the telescope. So we've made it to the top of the telescope. 450 feet above ground level at this height, and we're at the top of the receiver room. Uh, a radio telescope's sole purpose is holding a receiver at a focal point. That's to collect the radio waves that are coming from space. So the dish that you see below us, the reflector surface, but its main goal is to collect the radio waves coming from space as weak as they are, and sending them up to a focal point. Our prime focus receiver is actually stowed behind us here, but when that is out, that is the point that all the radio waves are focused at. But because of the unique design of the GBT, we were able to put that on a gimbal that folds into place. There's a secondary reflector directly over my head, so as the radio waves diverge, they hit that sub-reflector and are reflected back down to a point where they're refocused right here. That also allowed us to put eight more receivers in a turret on top of where we're standing, which is the top of the receiver room. These are the uh, basically the guides for the radio waves. They, they uh, reject the radio waves that we don't want for the receivers that they're connected to and allows in only the frequencies that we do. As you can see, there are different sizes. The bigger ones are lower frequency. The smaller ones are higher frequency. It means the wavelengths are either longer or shorter. And this is sort of where the brains are, the front end of the telescope. And we'll go down into the receiver room so you can get an idea of what the electronics look like. But they have to be shielded because we don't want the radio frequency emissions from the receivers to actually interfere with the radio waves we're trying to collect from space. So in the receiver room, part of the entire design of the receivers is such that the electronics that are within them don't interfere with their own work. We have to cool the uh, internal workings down to just a few degrees above absolute zero. And to do that, we place them in what's called a doer. That doer has liquid helium that is pumped into it. Uh, and they have to maintain a vacuum within those receivers. What you hear is that sort of chirping sound is a harmonic that's set up by the vacuum pumps in the cryogenic system. We've stopped here at the um, elevation drive uh, level. What you see behind me is the elevation gear. This is the part of the structure that drives everything above us uh, other than the Allidade Towers in elevation. So it can move from uh, tilt back to 95 degrees and then all the way down to five degrees. But because of the offset feed arm design of this telescope, you have to make sure that this thing is fairly well balanced. And if you look over to my left, to your right, you see a lot of plates on this huge structure uh, that's, that's hanging sort of in this arc. Uh, you also see some like portholes in the top of that. So that's a hollow basin basically that is filled with a cementitious material to give it a lot of weight and in the help for balance. But then in addition to that, there are these huge metal plates that are bolted to this, each side of that to help with the offset feed arm, which happens to be on this side of the telescope. So there's not a lot of power that it takes to move this telescope back and forth in elevation. As a matter of fact, 
The DC drive gears that you see right behind me are only about 20 horsepower. Uh, so it's a, it's a fairly balanced piece of machinery. It's very quiet when it moves, but it's an extremely important part of the effectiveness of the telescope. Welcome to the control room for the Green Bank Telescope. If you look out of the window behind me to my right, you'll see the telescope there out of the window. We are in a sealed room here that's sealed against radio frequency interference, which is the main problem with uh, doing a search for technology beyond Earth. When we're looking for these extraterrestrial signals, we're looking for similar kinds of technology that we have here uh, on Earth with our own equipment. And so we want to make sure that none of this leaks out through uh, doors like the one that you can see being opened behind you here. This is a sealed door that's closed to prevent um, the radio uh, interference from the machinery that's in the room from interfering with the observations taking place with this very powerful telescope outside. And you can see uh, over to my left here that even in this shielded room, the microwave here uh, for the operator to heat up dinner is inside a Faraday cage, inside a sealed container that's going to prevent uh, radio interference from that microwave from, from getting in the way of the observations. There's an operator here on duty basically 24 hours a day when observations are taking place. But the scientists can operate the telescope remotely. So when we're back in Berkeley doing observations for Breakthrough Listen, we can be sitting at a laptop communicating with the operator here in the control room and controlling the telescope outside. So literally uh, there have been times when I've been at my dining room table at my laptop steering the telescope out here uh, with the assistance from the operator here on duty at Green Bank. Hi, Dave McMahon again here at the Breakthrough Listen cluster at Green Bank. This is where the data from the telescope ends up as we process it for shipment off to the Breakthrough Listen team at UC Berkeley. We process tens of terabytes of data per day and get it into a form where we can transport it and help uh, get it ready to be processed by citizen scientists like you.